I've had a lot of questions and comments about uh, people asking about the, getting into the forestry mulching business and it seems like a lot of the questions and comments were related specifically to you know what size and type and maker of a skid steer and forestry head uh, mulcher to get uh, to run in you know forestry mulching business so I wanted to make a video for people who have those kind of questions and are curious. Um, I've gotten comments and questions anywhere from California and Portland to Florida to uh, Massachusetts, New York, North Carolina, South Carolina, just all over the place, Minnesota. So if you're not in, um, you know, a lot of the questions are from people who are already in the landscaping business and want to do forestry mulching uh, to complement their business or from the tree service business and um, they want to get into forestry mulching um, those kind of people already have equipment and understand uh, some of the logistics involved with the stuff so this video is really kind of geared for people who are interested in this kind of thing um, and may be doing a kind of a career change <laughs> To get outside and enjoy enjoy the great outdoors uh, just like I do so I wanted to just kind of generally go over some equipment and selecting uh, equipment uh, that is needed um, you know to conduct this kind of business so everybody would know that it's not just the machine so here we have you know you need a truck to pull your equipment you need a trailer and you need a machine so I just want to go over my thought process when I was starting in this business uh, three and a half years ago of you know where do you start what what are the priorities um, what am I looking for things like that if you have no idea what you're looking for so of this type of equipment, uh, the first place you start is at your machine, okay? Uh, the size of the machines vary, uh, the weights of the machines vary, <clears throat> uh, the capabilities, uh, you know, the options, the prices, all those things. Uh, I, I use a Bobcat T770. This is my second machine. Um, to me, it works great. Um, but there's other there's other machines out there to try out too. Uh, Cat makes a good machine. Kubota makes a good machine. So some of the questions I had about that is, um, you know, why did I pick my machine? And the first thing I say to people is, it really depends on who's located in your local area. Uh, you might not have a Bobcat dealer around you. Um, purchasing a machine is just one part of it um, owning the purchase price of a machine is just one part of the total cost of owning a machine okay the other part of that is um, the follow-on maintenance and that has to be considered uh, because you're going to be taking your machine into the shop for warranty items you're going to break that stuff you're going to take it to the shop you're going to need some hydraulic hoses, parts, and whatever. And uh, so you want your dealership to be close. So that's like a big factor on who you may select uh, for a forestry mulching machine, or for a skid steer, at least. Um, in my area, I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee. I just happen to, you know, we happen to have everybody. We have Cat, Bobcat, Kubota, John Deere, uh, everybody. Um, when I was doing my homework at the time, three and a half years ago, well, really four years ago when I was just starting to look, Kubota didn't make a machine uh, this size. <clears throat> so I looked at Caterpillar, a 299D XHP, which is a great machine. And um, I looked at the Bobcat, the T770, and the Bobcat T870. Okay. The 870 for Bobcat is the biggest machine they picked, or the biggest machine they, they make. Uh, the 770 here 
is a 92 horsepower machine. Uh, to run a forestry mulcher, uh, it really takes two things if you watched any of my other videos. Uh, the biggest thing for efficiency out of that cutting head is, is the RPMs. You want the speed of that cutting head uh, to go as fast as possible. Uh, there's a lot of weight and it, which generates the inertia which uh, gets that thing cutting through the hardwoods. So you want to pick a machine that has, it definitely has to have high flow hydraulics which uh, for my machine which is uh, 37 or 39 gallons per minute um, and different manufacturers have a little bit different high flows uh, ratings uh, but this T770 is like 37 gallons a minute and it has 92 horsepower to keep that hydraulic pump uh, pushing at that uh, rate. So, <clears throat> so what it came down for uh, to me is and I've had some questions about this too. Uh, if, you, if it comes down to between uh, two dealers uh, that you're working with and you're comparing the apples to apples, okay, you want the same kind of horsepower rating, the same kind of hydraulic flow, you want to be in the machine, test it out. When you're serious about uh, bu you know, buying a machine and ready to pull a trigger on it and your salesperson at that, rep, at that place knows you're serious, um, tell them to bring a machine out to your place if you have a place to to use it or drive it or ask them if he has a demo in your area going on uh, where they're going to show the machine to a few different customers and they let you drive it and operate it um, that's the best way to do it is I did that with both Caterpillar where they happen to have a group demo where I got to drive the machine uh, cut down some trees and everything, get the feel of the controls uh, inside the cab and everything. The machine was great. Um, with Bobcat, they brought a machine out to my place. I tried it on my place. And, um, you know, so see what works for you. Um, what it came down for me was price. Um, Caterpillar was about ten or $11,000 more. And again, just the purchase price isn't... Um, the the only consideration it's also who is close enough to you uh, to give you follow-on service okay that goes into your total operating uh, cost decision okay or your life cycle uh, costs so I just happen to pick a, a Bobcat T770 so so what this did then is uh, this T770 is about 10,500 pounds dry uh, when you load it up with fuel and all the oils um, it's about 11,000 pounds uh, this happens to be a cutting head that Bobcat uh, sells and it's made by Fecon um, just so happens to be made by Fecon this cutting head uh, itself weighs about 2,200 pounds, so that's another reason you want a good sized machine that has weight, uh, because when you're raising 2,200 pounds up on a boom, um, being on a flat surface is one thing, but when you're working in a forest or woods, you're always at on slopes and things like that, so that really cuts down on, I just want to call it the kind of a critical angle for tipping, so you want to make sure your machine has the weight uh, behind it uh, to pick a forest remulcher head up because they're heavy no matter who makes them uh, they're heavy so definitely tracks you want tracks on your equipment uh, number one for traction number two it gives you a nice long stable base um, for when you're lifting this much weight uh, constantly um, it just gives you a nice solid base whether laterally or four four and aft um, so knowing your weights of the machine that's kind of all I'm going to say about the machine you can get whatever is in your general area and within your price range uh, that works for you now this machine happens to be have 18 inch tracks and it's a little bigger machine so it's a little wider um, so I don't know if you can tell you probably can't really tell but this is centered, the machine is centered on the trailer, okay? And 
the edge of the tracks uh, kind of almost go to the tires. So there's two things. The next thing is the trailer. So the first thing you're looking for is what kind of machine and what size. Uh, the next kind of limiting factor is your trailer. So you have to have a trailer that uh, the machine is going to uh, ride safely on weight-wise or rating, rating-wise. Um, I happen to get a, a trailer that uh, can, it's a 20,000 pound trailer. It's, um, it's a total length of uh, 25 foot. The flat deck is 20 foot. It's got two, th two uh, uh, 8,000 pound axles. Um, I just went with the single wheels because I didn't want dualies because uh, just because of maintenance. I didn't want to be buying four tires or having a blowout on a highway with an inside tire. And I just didn't want, I didn't need that. So part of my decision making was, you know, optimizing the equipment. I didn't want to go like so oversized, uh, which leads to more expense. I wanted to get what safely worked for the equipment that I have. So again, this is a, about 11,000 pound machine, 2,200 pound cutter head. So that's uh, what, 13, 13, 2, 13,200 pounds. Um, again, I got a longer trailer because what I do is I also have a grapple, which is 82 inches wide, which is almost, you know, six and a half feet or so. And I have a construction bucket, which is an 80 inch construction bucket. So I can side load those onto my trailer when I'm taking those to uh, job sites. Um, if you're not going to do that, that's what works for my business. If you're not going to carry other equipment on your trailer, uh, and again, this flat deck is 20 feet. Uh, you can probably go, you know, five feet shorter. You get a 15 foot or maybe a 20 foot total. Uh, again, this is 25 foot. Uh, trailer, but the dovetail on it is a five foot dovetail. Okay, so if you're not going to carry extra equipment, uh, you can go with a shorter trailer um, and lessen up some of the expense. But this is what worked for me. Uh, the tires on it, the rims are uh, super heavy duty steel, they're heavy duty uh, equipment trailer tires. Uh, I've got a lot of pick tires that had, um, I think these are 10 ply tires plus sidewall uh, plies uh, because just like the ground here, I'm always driving on the people's lands or on, on their farm. It's unimproved, rocky, you know, sticks, whatever. So just to uh, avoid punctures in the tires uh, from debris on the ground or rocks or branches, uh, get a good set of tires. Uh, but getting back to, um, and again, I have an over-the-deck, this is called an over-the-deck um, trailer top compared to, I don't have any wheel wells, so the deck sits up higher uh, so it can get over the wheels. And the reason I got an over-the-deck uh, was just for practical purposes, the machine was too wide with the tracks to fit between uh, wheel wells. I think it's 88 inches is the width from side to track to side to track and I couldn't find a trailer anywhere that had um, you know 88 inches between wheel wells so I went with the over the over the over the wheel deck um, going up here uh, I got a gooseneck uh, several reasons I picked a gooseneck um, is because it handles a load better. Um, it rides better. So the gooseneck uh, that goes on my truck sits just like any other gooseneck. Uh, sits right over the axle, so it's a more stable ride. Um, this particular trailer was from Appalachian. They manufactured them. They're right outside of Akron, Ohio. Again, I'm in Clarksville, Tennessee, so I, I ordered this from them. They had a great selection. They manufacture them right there. Um, they sent me a worksheet to do all the measurements on my truck for my side beds, uh, my tailgate height, uh, the width, 
and um, some other measurements. So when they put the uh, connector on it, they do all the adjustments. Uh, they build out the gooseneck uh, far enough and high enough to give you clearance on the truck. Um, so this was like uh, you know a nice custom part that they do when they're building the trailer for you. You kind of order it and they build it for you. So um, that was a nice thing. Um, the rear ramps on this were also good. I mean they're heavy duty ramps. Again this is about 13,000 pounds of machine. I see a lot of people carrying bobcats around and their ramps are bent. Uh, so these when they drop down, I kind of like this design. When they drop down they have the extra support on the bottom uh, because when you get up on a ramp it's going to drop you down a little bit. So the stand helps, gives you good stability. So I like that about it, good heavy duty, good heavy duty ramps. Um, what else? So again, the first thing you're looking for is select your machine. Uh, the size of the machine is going to kind of determine uh, your optimal size trailer that you need. Okay, and again, this uh, trailer is capable of 20,000 pounds. Uh, some people ask me, well, if it's a 20,000 pound trailer, you got two, two uh, 8,000 pound axles at 16,000 pounds. Uh, but <clears throat> with a gooseneck or any kind of trailer, uh, a certain percentage of the weight gets carried on the gooseneck, gets carried by your truck. So you're kind of sharing the load. Okay. <clears throat> um, anything else about the trailer? Um, always carry a spare. Definitely good to have a spare. Don't have a blowout on the highway and try to be jacking up your trailer. Um, so the kind of, so the last thing I got was, then I picked a truck. So when I'm loaded, again with the 13,000 pounds of equipment, when I have my bucket and my grapple on there, it's close to 18,000 pounds or so. Um, this particular truck is a, it's a Dodge Ram, it's a 3500. Uh, it's got the uh, 6.7 Cummins uh, diesel in it. Uh, this truck happens to be rated, uh, can tow, um, you know, 20,000 pounds, a little over 20,000 pounds. Uh, the bed, uh, where the hookup goes, where the ball is, uh, this um, is capable of uh, carrying 4,900 pounds in the bed and you don't get all the squat or anything like that. And again, uh, one other thing I like about uh, having a gooseneck compared to a bumper pool is that it's a little more maneuverable. And this is a long trailer, it's 25 feet. So when I'm going in and out of people, sometimes it's just basically driveways or um, you know looking for places that turn around that aren't really farms. Uh, the maneuverability on this, on a gooseneck, is much better than a, a bumper pool because you can almost get a 90 degree, you know, well I can get a, I can turn this thing, I can truck and the trailer, I can turn it 90 degrees if I have to. Okay, so goosenecks are just more maneuverable and they ride better on your truck. Um, so these are some of the things. So again, starting point, pick a machine, then find a trailer, you know, and optimize the stuff. I'm not one to go like, to go big, just for the sake of going big. Um, the mission of my business is to do this. I've got this size skid steer, and I carry a bucket and a grapple. That's what I need it. Uh, select the trailer that's gonna carry that weight, and uh, be functional for you. Then once you have the trailer, and this trailer weighs about 4,000 pounds. So when you're talking about, um, you know, 13,000 pounds there, when I have my grapple and bucket on there, so that's another 2,000 pounds. It's a little less than 2,000 pounds. So that's, uh, what, 13, 14, 15,000 pounds. Trailer, 4,000 pounds. You're talking 19,000 pounds. Um, <clears throat> and the truck, I've run this over scales, this is a 9,000 pound truck. So in a lot of states, or most states, uh, 30,000 pounds 
is your maximum gross vehicle weight uh, without requiring a CDL uh, license. Uh, once you start getting over 30,000 pounds, uh, in most states, you're required to have a CDL license. Uh, the same thing as like a trucker, I guess. I don't know. I don't have one. I don't need one. So I never looked into it that much. So, um, so this is the equipment. So when people are asking about uh, getting into the business and the machine itself costs a lot, the cutting head costs a lot, just remember that the machine itself doesn't make a business. Uh, you have to get the machine someplace, so you need the equipment to get it there. Again, this trailer, this size trailer, was about $4,900, I think. You know, a heavy-duty truck. And again, this is new. These are new prices that I'm talking about. A uh, new truck uh, with that size engine and everything. You know, you're talking $50,000, 55000 for the truck. Uh, skid steer. This happens to be a, a 2017 with all the options, um, like rollover protection. Uh, you know, they have safety equipment on here for specifically for forestry mulching. I have the joysticks in there. Uh, it's called the A91 package. It comes with some different things. And because it's enclosed, it comes with uh, heater and air conditioning and, and that kind of stuff. So that machine itself sitting there was 83000 The cutter was twenty five. Trailer, forty nine. Truck, fifty four. Um, and probably the last thing you need is uh, some kind of shop, some kind of shop space. Uh, unless you want to put this in your garage at home, uh, you have to have some place to do maintenance. Um, so there's certain equipment, you know, you, you're going to want compressors and, and some other equipment um, and a place big enough uh, to do your maintenance on this. Some things I recommend <clears throat> uh, for hauling equipment is how you tie your equipment down. I've seen some people uh, riding with bobcats with with the uh, nylon straps. Not sure about those myself, uh, even though they say they might be whatever 5,000 pound straps. Um, what I use, and I got this, I kind of did some research and see what truckers use, and uh, this is Type 70 uh, transportation change, chain. It's Type 70 uh, chain. Uh, I use these T, T um, turnbuckles or ratchets or whatever you want to call them. Snug them down. Uh, this is like the proper way to uh, tie a heavy piece of equipment down because uh, you know people will be slamming on their brakes in front of you and pulling out in front of you. And you don't want this machine to come sliding forward and uh, do any damage or slide off the trailer while you're driving. So basically, the proper way to chain these things down, this Bobcat has tie-down points at all four corners. Uh, tie it down. Uh, the proper way to tie them down is to uh, hook them tight on both sides. Leave all the slack. Uh, take these uh, the turnbuckle and ratchet all the slack and then wrap the slack around it. That's a proper like tie-down. And again, they should be uh, they shouldn't be sideways, uh, they should be forward, and the rear one should be back. Uh, that's, you know, for acceleration and deceleration. Uh, you, want, you want the chains to be pulling from the front and pulling from the back uh, for, for the stability and safety of this, so it doesn't shift. And that's that. I've got my chain here for tying down the other equipment that I carry. Uh, one thing I do, I just carry, I just carry gas cans. This is about a, a full fuel load. If I was empty at the end of the day, uh, my T770 has a 42 gallon um, gas tank, and doing forestry mulching, I'll burn between four to five gallons per hour. So I'll go through almost uh, that much in a full like eight hour day, say, or nine hour day. So I like to carry enough fuel to refill it up at the end of the day, leave the equipment on the job site, drive home, refill up my cans. I don't use the uh, bed um, fuel tank 
only because it's just a personal preference. I don't like them. And lifting and lifting five gallon cans uh, keeps me young. Um, just a truck. Uh, why did I get a you know full size cab, short bed? Again, um, I could have got a full size cab and a long bed, but I didn't need it. This is a work truck, uh, so I just to shorten up. I got the regular six foot bed. I got the full size um, uh, cab uh, for two reasons because I use this as kind of like uh, my service truck in my biking uh, bike riding truck so in here I carry all my uh, tools that I need for any you know tightening things up taking off uh, hydraulic filters got all my wrenches toolbox grease gun um, in my big tool bag I've got um, you know all my cleaning equipment uh, tubes of grease um, uh, big wrenches, uh, stuff to change my tires, um, zip ties, just things to do, um, some basic maintenance on a job site, or pull broken hoses off or something like that, and uh, grease gun, um, in case the track comes off to resurface my tracks, you know, ratchets, uh, it's winter time now, so I carry a, a jumper, a battery jumper. Um, here in these bags, I've got two bags that I carry. Uh, one is full of recovery equipment, and this has things like uh, the big come-alongs, um, some uh, you know, 100 foot length of uh, high strength rope that's rated at 4,500 pounds. Um, tree straps to wrap around trees. I've got a couple of heavy duty uh, pulleys uh, so I can get some mechanical advantage out there if I'm if the bobcat stuck um, so I could um, do a come along and help pull it out. Uh, this other one I keep uh, chainsaw stuff so I keep a chainsaw, my oils, all that stuff in case I'm stuck uh, say on a slope and I'm bind it up between some trees or whatever I can cut my way out of um, the trees so again I use the back seat of mine and this has uh, my truck happens to have a uh, platform that folds down so everything sits in here nice and flat and accessible and, um, and then again I can just lock it up and all my tools are safe so that's kind of some of the things that go into, uh, you know, the forestry mulching business for people that are asking. And again, it's just not how much does the machine cost and how much can you make. Um, there's a little more to it than that. So I just wanted to give, uh, you know, my experience of my logic process of how I selected my equipment. And... Um, the kind of process I went through. You can't have a ghoul truck and then kind of back plan your way to the machine. It kind of has to work the other way around. Um, so anyway, I hope this uh, information is helpful to some people out there that are considering or thinking about it, uh, getting into the business. Um, if you have any questions about stuff like this, you could, um, I've got a website under Clevenger Forest Services. It's called, actually, my website is called CFS Mulching. That's CFSMulching.com. And you could uh, you can get on my website there. You could email me through that. Uh, my business email is D, my first initial is D for Dave, D Clevenger at CFSMulching.com. And I'll also put my uh, website and Facebook and uh, YouTube uh, things, addresses, or URLs on here. So if you have any questions, just hit me up. I don't mind answering questions um, about uh, anything like this related to the, this business that I might be able to help you with. Um, but if any of this information was helpful to you, that's awesome. Uh, just please, uh, if you would, hit the subscribe button 
and I really appreciate that. And uh, until next time, good luck to you all out there, and I'll talk to you later.